Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and I am at the Texas FFA Convention in Houston, Texas, and my guest today is Jared Mumford. Um, it, Jared, first off, we met a couple of years ago. It's good to yes, see sir. you again. Good Welcome back. You. Thank you, sir. Good to see you. What was it? Uh, Waco? I think in Waco. Yeah. That's, or no, was it? Where did we? Dallas. 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 Da- oh, so Dallas. it was last year we met. Yeah. Okay, I don't know why I thought it was two years ago, so... Um, just to get us kicked off here, uh, one of my goals with this series and this interview series is to introduce people outside of Texas, outside of FFA, to what's going on. Like, what's the big deal? Why do I fly here every year for the last three years? Why will I be here for the next next year, the year after? Why do I keep coming back? So just to kick us, get us kicked off here, Jared, what keeps you coming back year after year? What keeps me coming back here is just the phenomenalness of the youth. Being in agriculture, being a fifth generation cow calf producer, we don't have good quality youth coming up. Um, mm. They just, they're, we have so many um, students that don't have the work ethic they need. They don't mm. have the, the personable skills. Mm. They don't have the ability to say, I want to do X, Y, Z. And then they do X, Y, Z. Mm. Um that lacks mm. until you get here. Yeah. And when you get here, these students, they have drive, they have motivation, they have the want to, they have the desire. Mm-hmm. Um, these students here will be the ones that <laughs> follow in our footsteps, yeah. that do what we're doing now. They're the ones that will carry the next generation forward. These are the leaders. Yes. And, and when you get to, we have to realize that, that, that Timothy had Paul. Mm-hmm. So we are the Pauls mm-hmm. to these Timothys. Yeah. We look up to those that are older than us mm-hmm. and we're their Timothys. They're our Pauls. Mm-hmm. They've taught us so much about the industry and, and how the industry is progressing forward with technologies. And we've got to get these students brought up today and we've got to bring those students in into the, uh, the ag world and into the ag sector. And these are the guys that gives you that future that brightness that hope mm-hmm. that hey yeah. you know what we're going to live another day we <laughs> we have we have the students and that's what this organization of the texas ffa and the national ffa in every other state that's what they bring is they bring those quality students mm. into the next workforce where they go to college first or where they go to the work first one mm-hmm. doesn't matter mm-hmm. they're coming mm. to take our place mm-hmm. they are coming to fill our shoes according to george jones yeah what's been one of your favorite parts of the convention so far this year um just to get to meet the students yeah to shake their hands to to get to share hugs to get to know that that i am here as an industry representative mm-hmm. talking you know about what i do mm-hmm. to realize that there's students that's gonna that's gonna come and take our place yeah. there's students that have the want to the desire to do what i do mm-hmm. that i can be a mentor of but Man, just just to see the kids. Yes. Talk a little bit about what you do. You mentioned so, fifth generation. Like, yes. talk a little bit about. So at home, I'm a fifth generation cow calf producer, mm-hmm. and uh, we run a I would say a pasture to plate program, mm-hmm. raising and selling beef directly into consumers. But I'm going to say that we have a caveat in that that's yeah. that, that I've kind of missed. They're a really big part of our program. We raise beef for Charleston State University mm. Meat Science Center to have beef for those students in the college world to cut up to see the high school students that are going into the um, the meat science mm-hmm. judging contest. Which um, is getting more and more popular. I had two popular. two um, students on the show this week about that are in, into that program. One, yes. one young lady, she goes to, I think, Texas A&M. Mm-hmm. Yep, she's in their program. So we are helping that Charleston State University as a university, mm-hmm. giving them quality beef for them to raise or not Mm. to raise but for them to process and turn into retail cuts for those students to either say hey i want to be in the media science industry or hey (laughs) i don't want to be in the media science industry but now i'm a better consumer yes so that is what we do at home we raise uh we're about being the fact that Charleston is a university Mm -hmm. and not a usda facility with usda Mm -hmm. grading Mm -hmm. and marketing um the their facilities would be equivalent on yeah. a grading scale because it's an educational scale. Mm-hmm. So um, we are 80 to 85% prime graded carcasses. Mm-hmm. 
which is a feat that maybe only 10%, 12% of the nation's cow herd can attain. Wow. So we're running an 80 to 85% carcass um, kill rate on that aspect. And that's what we do at home. Mm. Um, and then my day job is I'm a, I do a lot of things, but anyway, my main day job, I'm a cattle embryologist. Mm. I do embryo work in cattle, do AI work in cattle. Mm. I sell semen for ST genetics. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I teach AI courses as a ministry or I pick that answered prayer up coming out of um, wow. a trip in Paraguay. Wow. When you come to my AI classes, that is 100% ministry focused. And I try to intertwine scripture mm. with cow management to the best of my ability. Scripture with cow management and AI. How do you, what, what, how does this work, Brad? I'll the, be on, I'll be straight <laughs> up on it. I, it is not Jared doing that work. Yes. That's 100% me saying, God, you're in control. Mm. Speak through me. Mm. Give me the scriptures that tie to these management mm. and make that work. Mm. So, when we um serve my memory, if this is if I'm telling my my memory might be off on this, but we talked about. Did you have some TikTok going or something like that? Oh no no, I got in the TikTok world. Okay, I, that's I what. Did. Okay, I thought I don't know why I was thinking that you were doing some of this on TikTok too. Not yet. Okay, nope. Facebook is the full time job as it is. Ah, I got it. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I just didn't know where to send them. Like how right? how do people how do people follow your work in general? Like how so, do they do that? You can follow Montford Cattle Service mm-hmm. on Facebook. Yep. You can follow JM Beef on Facebook. Mm-hmm. There is a Jared Montford. We can be friends as Jared Montford on Facebook. Mm-hmm. And then I have a public figure on Facebook, Jared Montford public figure. Yep. Be careful of my personal account. Yeah. One of them has 4,000 some odd friends. <laughs> But it was hacked, so I had to start all oh, over. Man. So if you see the one that I'm doing it actively, <laughs> that one's me. If you see the one that hadn't been touched yeah, in the yeah, year, yeah, yeah. that one is no longer me. <laughs> so what do you got? What do you got planned for the rest, the rest of the year? Like what's there, up for you? So the rest of the year, we're beginning. Even though we're a full time trade show right now, it's actually slow seasons for me. That's why I'm hitting the trade mm-hmm. shows. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm here with the students and the ag teachers. Um, so we start breeding hard in breeding cattle hard in Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Sorry. In March, we roll until June, mm-hmm. and then we hit this stuff in July. We'll hit this stuff in August through mm-hmm. more trade shows. We'll get back to the house in September. I'll give all of my cows out first of September mm-hmm. and into the middle of October. Mm-hmm. So I have a 45-day Kevin season. While that is going on, I will actually go on a uh, sales trip with ST Genetics. Mm-hmm. Um, they take all their top semen sales reps on trips every year, mm-hmm. and I've earned that the last Amazing. Five, six years in a row. So I will spend a week in Nebraska with them guys, and then be back at the house, finish Kevin out cows. Um, and then I'll take a little bit of the end of October off, a little bit of the first of November off. Yeah. And then we go right into full-fledged breeding season, starting around Thanksgiving. We'll breed cows heavy from Thanksgiving. Um, all the way through December, all the way through the mm. middle of January, and then I'll have a slow season again mm. from middle of January to the middle of March. Amazing. And it will pick up again. So I run a pretty seasonal type business. Yeah. And then when you get time to break, get time to be at home, you're at home. That's amazing. So. Well, Jared, man, great to see you again. Great, great to, to great you. to have you back here. Um, to and uh, thank you for coming on the show. First time I've done this kind of setup here, so. I'm pretty excited to open this up, and I'm already making plans for next year and how I'll do it next year, so we can keep it going. Um, and uh, to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you had a lot of fun tuning into this and listening. We had a lot of fun making this for you. If you haven't hit the subscribe button yet uh, or the follow button, then make sure you do this. This is a daily show. Each and every day we're bringing you new interviews, new content, hopefully new inspiration to help you along in your journey. So, again, make sure to follow so you get that notification. And, Jared, again, appreciate you making some time for us today, man. Yes, sir. Thank you. God bless you, brother.